What's going on everybody? It's your boy Dead on Dave. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to your daily focus. It is the Monday Night Raw preview show. And remember, Raw is not live tonight. No, 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 because it's emanating from Mario London Town. So it will be recorded around midday in England and then shown for the United States audience, the North American audience, regular time on USA Network. Tonight, I make my return to the Joe Cronin Show to do the Monday Night Raw review live, and that'll be a lot of fun. So make sure you check us out there on Joe Cronin Show. But for now, you're here on Dead on Dave Productions with me. And it's time to get into our Monday Night Raw preview. So let's jump right into that, shall we? Let's have some fun and talk about what's going to happen tonight. Now, while I wasn't woefully disappointed with last week i wasn't blown away either so i'm expecting more from tonight's episode if for no other reason then it's hard to pr to please the brits it really is they're a tough crowd because they're a smarter crowd they're also unruly because they really love tna their tna is very very popular in england and you know what basically every other promotion is very popular in england as well so to have um, the WWE come in there and lay an egg would be really bad. And believe me, England will let them have it. So expect a very good show tonight just because WWE understands they have to hit a home run. They are the, the, whatever the equivalent of a home run is home run is in cricket. I don't know. All the wickets and the bowlers. I don't know. Anyway, so let's go ahead and jump right into what the WWE will probably do and what they should do. To make Monday Night Raw epic. First off, what is going to happen with the ever-growing Randy Orton, Seth Rollins situation? Randy Orton did become the number one contender last week in winning a grueling triple threat match against Ryback and Roman Reigns. He says with a question mark. Uh, <laughs> trying to remember because the match wasn't all that good. Directly after it, he was attacked. Seth Rollins curb stomped him. How will Randy Orton respond tonight? Is he just going to start RKOing everybody in the authority? What's going to happen? Will there be some sort of tag team match set up between him and the authority, which seems to be kind of the go-to move? Or uh, could we see something like a beat-the-clock type of match? Uh, some kind of stipulation that he's going to have to do to maybe choose the stipulation because we know it's extreme rules and there should be stipulations added to almost all the matches. So could they have him fight members of the authority to try like a gauntlet match? If he beats everybody that they say he has to beat or whatever, he gets to choose the stipulation for the extreme rules match. Something like that. I think that could be interesting. They could do something of that sort. Uh, there's other ways to handle it, but it'll be see, interesting to see what they decide to do. Uh, something needs to be added to this match. Obviously, I feel like there is something missing because I think most people feel this is a, a filler feud. It's just something to make Seth Rollins look a little bit more badass and more legitimate as a champion. I mean, what better way than to win your first feud definitively against a 10-time WWE champion? So it makes a lot of sense. They need to do it in a really good way, but also entertaining. It has to work on all levels. And for... It's doubly important because it is Seth Rollins' first title defense and his first feud. So it should be really interesting to see what they do. But the question is for tonight, how will they further the storyline? And will Randy Orton get revenge or even seek it for last week's attack? From here, it gets really interesting because the rest of the show is, I think it's going to be UK-centered. So before we jump into there, let's talk about some of the smaller things that might be happening. Ms. Ms. Dow, how are they going to continue to further that storyline? What is Summer Rae going to be a new addition to it? Uh, they added her last week because she co-starred with the Miz in the Marine Four. But can they further that with her in the Ms. Ms. Dow situation? Or is it time for just these two to really just start getting physical and taking uh, taking the punishment to each other? 
Also, what's the end game for this feud? I think that has to be some that has to become apparent really soon. I think that has to really start. We got to see the, the the light at the end of this tunnel. We have to know what is going to be the benefit of Sandow. You know, coming out of the shadow of the Miz, is it going to be for rights of the gimmick? Is it going to be for the sunglasses? Uh, you know, what is it going to be? Are, are they going to do a a little flip flop in situation where if Miz Dow loses to Miz, he has to become Miz's stunt double or servant again. Uh, I'm sorry, assistant. And if Miz Dow win, uh, lo- uh, beats Miz, is Miz going to have to become the assistant of Ms. Dow, you know, that could be something interesting. I mean, we've seen it with the Bellas, but I mean, you'd have to figure Ms. Dow would put a lot of torture through on the Miz at this point, but that's not necessarily uh, something that has to happen. We don't need to see that stipulation. Of course, it could just we can just end this and let Ms. Dow move on to bigger and better things. But the question is, what happens to both of them after this feud? Miz doesn't really seem to be going anywhere. I mean, he could always get back into the Intercontinental or United States Championship race, of course. But people don't really expect him to have a a very important feud with anybody at this point. They're not expecting much out of him because he's the A-lister and all that crap. And Miz Dow... Outside of his feud with The Miz, what has he done in the past couple of years to make anybody think that he even has a life outside of this feud? So I think these are questions that has to be answered, and they're going to have to figure out a way to make us a little bit more engaged with life after this feud. Okay. Tag team division. I think this is something that could get lost tonight. I, I think it's important that the tag team division gets sussed out a little bit, and who's going to get the next tag team title shot at hopefully I'd assume extreme rules. Is it going to be the Lucha dragons? Is it going to be new day the the new new day? I should say, I mean, what's going to happen? Um, it's possible that they just set up a number one contenders match at extreme rules for the tag team championship uh, situation. Since we don't have a clear cut definitive number one contender for the titles, There's really no point in having Kid and Cesaro even defend uh, at Extreme Rules against anybody that they really want to be important. I mean, maybe a random defense against Los Matadores or something like that. But if they want to really build a feud between the tag teams, especially with the Usos out, what better way than to kind of have a more important match in the tag team division for Extreme Rules or maybe even on the pre-show? Have these guys, you know, four tag teams, three tag teams, whatever, compete in some kind of a multi-tiered tag team match for the new number one contendership. Or maybe even have a tag team tournament. You have four teams, one night. That That's a great idea. I think that's a really good idea. You have the top four teams. Let's call it the Ascension, New Day, Lucha Dragons, and Primetime Players. Let's call them those four. And you, you match them up. And you have a little tournament, a little three-matched tournament. Perfect. And then they have to take the uh, take on tag team champs either at the next pay-per-view or, or the next night on Raw. That's something they could do to ma- put a little bit of intrigue into the tag team division. And since the card for Extreme Rules seems light anyway right now, we're only talking four or five matches so far, this is a perfect way to fill a little bit. And make it a little more interesting. I think it's a really good idea. What you could do even is on the pre-show, you have both first round matches. You have the the, both matches. Then the finals you have on the pay-per-view. That's something you could do to add a lot of intrigue to the uh, tag team division. Or you got two Raws until then. So tonight you have the first round. Next week you have the finals. Then at the pay-per-view, you have the tag team title match. That way there's a little bit of a build over three weeks. I'd rather see a tag team built a little bit longer than that. But it's just something that they could easily do to add a little life into the division. Um, And continue to build it and its growth. I think that's important. All right. From here on out, this is basically going to be how to make this UK show more important for the fans there in England. Okay, and I think it starts with John Cena. 
And this is where things get interesting because John Cena, of course, is doing his um, open challenge for the United States Championship. So the question is, who should come out? Well, I think the only thing we know is it will certainly be a UK star. The two top two guys, I think it should be. It's, it's either going to be Ad, uh, Adrian. It's not Adrian anymore. Neville and his purple cape. But I don't think he has a chance to win the title unless they really want to shake things up and have him beat Cena, which would be incredible. But then it kind of throws the uh, Rusev stuff into flux and they ha already have that match set up for Extreme Rules. So I don't see Neville winning. But you can have Neville come out and just do what he did against Rollins and that just perform his ass off and look really good in defeat. His story is going to be one of earning respect, I have a feeling. Much similar to how John Cena came into the uh, situation. You know, when John Cena first came in, it, he was losing matches to top stars, but he was earning their respect. I and mean, like with Kurt Angle, they could do the exact same thing and have Neville just earn respect against these top guys in the company and just take Cena to the limit. That could be really interesting. However, it's not necessary at all for him to be the guy. There is a guy on tour for the European leg that a lot of people weren't sure that he was going to be. He is an NXT guy. He has plenty of experience. He's ready to come up. And he is beloved in the UK. And, of course, I'm talking about Finn Balor. If Finn Balor is the man to come out for that United States Open Championship match, whoo, boy, all bets are off at that point. Because let me tell you, Finn Balor could not only challenge John Cena, he could win. And it would be... I mean, really, essentially, you're in the same boat as you are with Neville because if he loses, then what about Rusev and all that? I mean, make it a triple threat match, maybe. I don't know. Which isn't a bad idea anyway. You could have either Neville or Balor in that and turn it into a triple threat match for Extreme Rules with Rusev. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, you want a shakeup. This is a way to do it. now. Or you could either have Neville or Balor just perform really well. But if it's a debut for Balor and it's in the UK, I think he has a much greater chance of beating Cena. Now they could have done the same thing with Neville and had his debut come tonight and have him beat Cena for the title or whatever. And that would have been quite interesting, but I like the way they've done Neville so far. I like the way that they've introduced him. Uh, so I have no regrets about that, but they could do it with Balor. And if Balor comes out, the, wow, UK is going to explode. Absolutely explode. It, should, it could be a lot of fun. At the very least, they're going to give the UK fans a hell of a lot to talk about. I think the important thing is tonight has to be big for people like Balor, if he indeed is going to make his debut, which I have a feeling he's going to. Adrian Neville, even if it's not part of the United States Open Championship match, he's going to have to do something pretty damn incredible tonight and look for him to do so. Bad News Barrett and Sheamus. These, all four of these guys really need to have huge nights. They need to be featured. Yes, maybe it's catering to the WWE, to, to the universe in the UK, but who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? I think it's a good thing. It's important. And it's got to be about the fans at some point. And in the UK, where you are trailing other companies in wrestling there in popularity, because by the numbers, they are. Uh, sometimes you have to do stuff like this. You Don't be surprised to have William Regal come out in some capacity. They love Regal there. I, hell, I'd like to see um, Finley. I'd love to see Finley come out. I haven't seen him forever. That would be great to see. There's one other person. One other person who's a UK person that has an opportunity to be in a big spot. And in fact, she's already in a big match. And she's kind of been overlooked. And of course, that's Paige. Paige from Norwich, England. She's got a great chance in this Diva Battle Royal uh, nobody's really talking about her winning this match because the, the, the focus has kind of been on Naomi. But the fact that they're even having this match is kind of telling me that Naomi's not the chosen one. She's she's not the one. So I think the top two girls uh, to win this match is either going to be Brie, 
because of all the miscommunication that they've been teasing lately with the Bellas. And not only that, they can always go back and break and just say, you think I was going to forgive you for putting me through hell while I was your personal assistant? You really think that that's how this was going to go? She could easily do that. And she, and that would be an interesting storyline. Or have Paige win the damn thing and become the number one contender. Hell, her and AJ just beat the Bellas at WrestleMania. She's coming off momentum anyway, so it makes perfect sense for her to do so. And honestly, if you're not going to do anything with anybody else of UK descent to make the crowd happy, why not do it with Paige, who could get the biggest reaction of the night if she were to win that battle royal? It could be something memorable, and you don't have to sacrifice any other situation like Cena or anything like that because it will be the talking point of the night. Her winning that match would be probably the biggest storyline coming out. Now, if only she could cash in, cash it in there and win the title there in England, that would be even be better. I think that would be even more incredible. So I think those are all the big points. I mean, Sheamus is obviously going to do something, probably continue his feud with Ziggler or maybe going after another small guy. I mean, hell, that's how they could incorporate Neville into this situation is have Sheamus go after him and Neville go over. Because Sheamus, he's a heel. So he can lose but still be in an awesome spot, especially with another uh, UK guy. And it's not going to hurt him. It's not going to affect him. Sheamus is probably still going to get cheered. We know Barrett will. They love Bad News Barrett. Barrett gets cheered in most places anyway because he's so damn good. But he should continue to get cheered regardless. And both Neville and Balor, the reactions they're going to get are going to be incredible. Pages is going to be incredible. It should be a really rocking night at the O2 Arena. I'm really excited about it. What do you guys think? How would you book tonight's uh, Monday Night Raw? What would you do to make it a little bit extra special? Do you even care about the UK crowd? Would you just book your event going into uh, Extreme Rules? Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. I think uh, that's about going to wrap it up. We've hit just about all the points that I've wanted to hit. I think it's a good show. So make sure you check out Monday Night Raw tonight. It should be a lot of fun. Very interesting. More coming from the channel today. Of course, Jeff, Jeff Huffman and I are doing our... New baseball show, episode three of Touch 'em All. We're going to recap last week in Major League Baseball. Should be a lot of fun. And you never know else. You never know what else is going to come from the channel. You don't know if I'm going to do a random five questions, which I know I haven't done in a long time, but one is coming. So keep your Skypes on. Add me on Skype, David Vancura, D A V I D V A N C U R A. And you never know when I might call you up to do a five random question. Also, Go on over to deadondave.spreadshirt.com to check out all of my merchandise, all of which were lovingly designed by the great Isaac Rojas. Make sure you check that out and pick up a copious shirt, amongst other things. Drink out of my face. Do whatever you like. Uh, pee in the cup for all I care. But if you piss in it, make sure you take a picture. You can block out your dick, but show the pee going into the cup, and it'll be funny for all. Also, if you're a big hockey guy, if you love sports and you like talking about sports, like you should, you know, from, from the fan perspective and no bullshit, go check out Tommy C over on Shot From The Point. And great channel. I'm on that channel quite a bit. I do a weekly show with him, daily show, uh, In The Crease with Tommy C, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will not be on tonight. He's got all kinds of school and stuff going on, which is going to kind of preempt all of that. So he'll be doing a solo show. Make sure you check that out. Should be good. And then, uh, of course, I should be there the rest of the week. Also, Tuesday night, the return of Monetize This with the Power Five. Myself should be there. Tommy C should be there. Tosovitz, Jesse, and Joe Cronin all together. It's going to be quite amazing. Make sure you check out Monetize This. No idea what time. Tuesday night, probably uh, what, around midnight, I think. E either 11.30 p.m. or midnight Tuesday. So check that out. Should be a lot of fun. Other than that, I think I've about hit everything. Jeff Huffman, Grand Slam 87 over on YouTube. Make sure you check him out. You can tweet me at, at Dead on Dave V. Anything you want to say, go ahead and tweet me there. You can sh send me your memes if you want me to add your meme into the meme mix that I have here. You can go ahead and send me that and I'll throw it in there if it's funny. Go ahead and hit up Jeff Huffman if you want nutrition tips or if you just want to talk any realm of sports because that guy is a wealth of knowledge 
So uh, he's Grand Slam 87, at Grand Slam 87 on Twitter. And I'm at Dead on Day V on Twitter. Other than that, I think that's going to do it. Thank you guys for your time. Thanks for the great show yesterday, the great live show, Dead on Dave Live. It was good. All the callers were fantastic. A lot of fun. Talked about a lot of different subjects. Hope you guys enjoyed it. That will, Remember, that is every single Sunday, 1 to 3 Eastern Standard Time, live two hours of viewer questions. Make sure you continue to support that as well. Well, that's going to do it. So we'll see you next time right here on Dead on Dave Productions. Like, subscribe, and share. We're on the road to 600. Get us there, guys. We're almost there. Thank you for all the support. We'll see you next time. Peace.